O oh God, you come to us not in the chaos of the whirlwind, not in the roar of an earthquake, not in the crackling heat of the fire, but in the sound of sheer silence. Quiet our minds, bring peace to our hearts, and stillness to our bodies, that we might meet you in that silence. Help us to listen for your still, small voice. Give us the courage to go wherever you lead us, trusting that you will prepare the way. We pray this in the name of our companion on the journey, Jesus the Christ. Welcome to worship on this very, very special Sunday. It is Father's Day. It is also uh, Indigenous Peoples Day, uh, declared by the Presbyterian Church. And um, it is the beginning of the uh, the proper season of the church year. I'd like to thank those who have helped with the service today. Jan, once again, the editing, the recording. Um, to Amanda for help with hymns, and Amanda also for the special music today. I'd like to thank Donna for decorations, for uh, keeping the sanctuary here looking good. We are back to regular services, but we still intend to continue these online services as long as there is a need for them. Reminder to everyone that even though things are returning to normal, it's still not completely safe, and you do need to be careful. You do need to stay healthy, and you do need to continue to pray for one another. Let's begin our worship today with prayer. Creator God, you have made a world of such amazing diversity, with unique living things that we can't count, in an interdependent pattern on which all life depends. We praise you for such wonder. You've created such amazing diversity in humankind through culture and language, custom and community, expressed in creativity and compassion over and over again. We praise you for such wonder. In Jesus Christ, you show us how much you love your creation and how we can live by your love. By the power of your Spirit, give us new eyes to behold the wonders that you've made and teach us how to share in the praise your creation offers you day by day. Amen. As pants the heart for cool streams when heated in the chase so
Our gospel reading today tells a, a very strange story, to say the least. Luke writes this account in chapter 8, verses 26 to 39. Then they arrived at the region of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As he stepped out on shore, a man from the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had not worn any clothes, and he did not live in a house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, shouting, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there, on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd stampeded down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swineherd saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then the people came out to see what had happened, and when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they became frightened. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then the whole throng of people of the surrounding region of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone out begged that he might be with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. This is the gospel of our risen Lord. So in this passage, we find that Jesus has crossed the Sea of Galilee, and he's now entered Gentile territory. This is an important consideration, since much that he's going to find here would be considered unclean by anyone of the Jewish faith. As we think about the details of this encounter, Jesus is met by this man possessed by many demons. The man is naked. He's wearing no clothing. In fact, he has not worn any clothing for many years. This man doesn't live in a house. He makes his home in the tombs. This would certainly be an unsettling meeting. Even for us, uh, who don't share the code of purity, the ritual purity that was demanded of the Jews, this would still be quite a difficult scene. I'm sure our first inclination would be to turn around and get out of there as fast as we possibly could. Clearly, this man that met them was not in his right mind. And yet, this poor troubled soul easily answers a question that Jesus' disciples had just asked as they crossed the sea. If we were to go back a few verses to the section before this story, as they were crossing the Sea of Galilee, a great storm came up and threatened to sink their boat. The disciples were terrified. Jesus was asleep, and so they woke him. And Jesus then rebuked the winds and calmed the sea. The disciples asked one another, Who is this that he commands even the wind and water? And they obey him. Clearly, the disciples had no idea yet who Jesus really was. And yet, 
This man filled with demons fell at Jesus' feet and shouted at the top of his lungs, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? Now, perhaps the man himself didn't actually know, but certainly the demons who possessed him must have. Jesus chooses to heal the man, to restore him to his proper place in society, and he commands the demons to leave the man. The number of demons is emphasized when Jesus asks the man's name. He replies, Legion. In the Roman army, a legion was made up of 5,600 men. At first, these demons resist, and they plead with Jesus not to send them back into the abyss. Now, according to Revelation, the abyss is a prison reserved for demon spirits. They plead with Jesus to instead let them enter the pigs, the herd of pigs that's on the hillside, and Jesus allows it. This is really another indication that we've left Jewish territory and are now in Gentile uh, territory. No Jew would be raising pigs. The demons are then cast out of the man and into the pigs. The pigs run down the hillside and drown themselves in the sea along with the demons. The people who were looking after the pigs are upset by this, and they rush off to tell everyone else what Jesus has done. The townsfolk then come out to see for themselves. When they arrived, the most startling thing they encounter is that this man who had been possessed, this man who had been running around totally naked, totally mad, is now sitting here calmly at the feet of Jesus, in clothing and in his right mind. This is a man who had never been in his right mind. He has now assumed the position of a disciple, of a student, sitting at Jesus' feet, listening to what Jesus has to say. Luke's story at this point looks at two different reactions of the people involved. First, the people of the town and the swine herders. They were afraid. They'd never seen anything like this before. Instead of looking at what had happened and being in awe, being amazed by what Jesus had done, instead of begging Jesus to stay and to carry on his healing in the city. They ask him to leave. The second reaction was the man who had been healed. His life had been completely turned around. He was naked, now he's clothed. He had thrown himself at Jesus' feet in the beginning, but in doing so, he was asking Jesus to leave him alone, and now he sits at Jesus' feet as a disciple. These demons had ruled his life, and now he is in control. The rest of the people ask Jesus to leave. This man pleads with Jesus to let him come along with him. Jesus had granted the request of the demons to enter the pigs. He was about to, to grant the request of the Gerasenes to leave their land, but he refuses the request of this man who had been possessed and is now healed. Instead, Jesus commissions the man as an apostle, having restored his health, and his position in the community, Jesus now tells the man to go and proclaim the gospel to his people. As Luke tells us, that's exactly what the man did. He went away proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. It is a strange story indeed. 
We have legions of demons. We have pigs running into a lake and drowning themselves. We have a naked man living in the tombs. If we were looking somewhere for a message to show the good news of the gospel, the good news of God's saving grace, this probably wouldn't be the story. But the story does bring us three very important points regarding God's grace. First, despite what the early church, made up mainly of converted Jews, may have believed, God's grace through Jesus Christ is extended not just to the Jews. Jesus extended that grace to the whole world, including the Gentile world. He extended it to everyone who acknowledges him as the Son of God. Second, although we may not have been possessed by demons in quite the same way as the man in the story, and hopefully none of us have suffered in quite the way he was suffering, there are demons in this world. There are demons that do enter us and do control our lives. There are things that possess us and take us away from what's really important. Things that take over control. Things that only God's saving grace, given through his Son, can cast out. And third, those of us who have been touched by that grace, like the man in the story, have been called. We've been commissioned to be disciples, to be apostles, to be witnesses, proclaiming how much Jesus has done for us. May God's Spirit empower us for discipleship and give us courage to witness God's grace in our lives. Amen. silently in prayer and reaching out to hold me when I had a nightmare you could read quite a story in the calluses and lines the years of work and worry had left their mark behind I remember Daddy's hands, how they held my mama tight and patted my back for something done right. There are things that I'd forgotten that I loved about the man, but I'll always remember. The love in Daddy's hands Daddy's hands Were soft and kind when I was crying Daddy's hands Were hard as steel when I'd done wrong Daddy's hands weren't always gentle But I've come to understand Sacrificed unselfishly just to keep us all fed. If I could do things over, well, I'd live my life again and 
never take for granted the love in daddy's hands the daddy's hands were soft and kind when i was crying daddy's hands were hard as steel when i don't Daddy's hands weren't always gentle, but I've come to understand there was always love in Daddy's hands. Daddy's hands were soft and kind when I was crying. Daddy's hands. We're hard as steel and I done wrong. Daddy's hands weren't always gentle, but I've come to understand. There was always love. In Daddy's hands. Let us pray. God of the earth and of all its peoples, in Jesus Christ, you proclaim the good news that true life and peace are found in you. Guide your church to proclaim this good news, not in ways that merely please people or don't ruffle feathers, but in ways that bring Christ's reconciling love to divided communities. Shine your light into the world's hidden corners, exposing violence, exploitation, bigotry. Reveal what dehumanizes the vulnerable and degrades your creation. God of healing and hope, we pray for all those who are ill or in pain, for the anxious and the discouraged. For those facing death or the loss of someone dearly beloved. And for those struggling to make ends meet in these uncertain times. On this National Indigenous Sunday, we pray for Indigenous communities across the land. Grant them wisdom and healing as they address the needs of their people. Bring healing to those who remember painful experience and build bridges of understanding among us all. We pray also for Presbyterian World Service and Development and for its partners as they work to bring healing and hope to places of strife and deprivation. May the mission we share in Jesus' name shine the light of your love into desperate lives. God of the faithful future, Bless this community of faith and guide us as we plan for the future in changing times. Bless students and teachers as another challenging school year ends and lift the stress from their lives this summer. Give us a time of rest and enjoyment in the summer months and restore our hope and our energy to serve you in your world. 
We offer all our prayers, spoken and unspoken, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. of the darkness shining Jesus light of the world shine upon us set us free by the truth you now bring us shine on me shine on me shine Jesus shine fill this land with the Father's glory Go now, proclaiming to all how much Jesus has done for you. Be as one with each other in Christ. Wait for the Lord and be ready to hear God's voice, even in the sounds of sheer silence. And may God be your fortress. May Christ Jesus release you from all that torments you. And may the Holy Spirit give you light and truth to sustain you day and night. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. 